Hi, today I'll be showing you how I made a homemade Biesemeyer style table saw fence, but with a twist. What sets this fence apart from other Biesemeyer style fences is this 3 quarter 16 threaded rod running along the front of the rail. This makes for absolute repeatability since the fence is pulled to the nearest sixteenth of an inch every time you lock it down. Behind the cam are two nuts, each cut in half. As the cam gets locked down, the threads mesh and move it to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. I started by drilling holes in a three by three by quarter angle iron and then screwing it onto the frame of my table saw cabinet. The other leg of the angle gets quarter inch holes drilled every six inches to bolt down this square tube. This gets a lot of drilled and tapped holes, so I started by marking and center punching, then drilling them all, then tapping, countersinking, and re-tapping to remove the burr. Here I'm drilling a 3 8 hole 5 8 inch deep into a piece of half inch shaft. This gets welded into a hole near the end of the square tube, but if you don't have a lathe, just weld it in and then drill it with a drill press. I got a bit of weld spatter in the hole, so here I'm just drilling that out. And after drilling that, this hole gets a spring and a steel ball, and you'll see how that works later. I welded an end cap on both ends and then ground the weld smooth. Now after a coat of paint, we can bolt that down to the angle. Now I'll start on the fence itself. I started with a piece of two by two by quarter angle iron, 16 inches long, and this will be the T-square for the front of the fence. It gets a drilled and tapped hole near each corner. This piece will hold the adjustable UHMW pads that are used to square the fence. Here I'm bending it to give it a little bit of spring pressure so it stays tight against the adjustment screws. I actually bent these ends the wrong way the first time. So here's how it should look. Now this piece can get clamped to the angle and add some more heat resistant clamps. Make sure it's parallel and then remove the plastic clamp. Do the same thing for both sides of the angle and I just filled the holes with weld, so here's how that looks. You need to make sure that this part is completely clean, then mark one inch on either side of the center and clamp on a piece of two by quarter flat bar. Make sure it's square and clamp it securely. This needs to stay flat, and then weld that solid. Now starting on the two inch square tube that will be the center of the fence. I marked every three inches, then extended those marks across and then marked 5 8 inch in from the outsides on each of those marks. I did this on both sides of the square tube. Then I center punched each mark and I labeled every other one L or S for a large or small hole. The small holes are drilled quarter inch and the large holes are drilled 3 8 inch. And there goes the tripod again. Then I deburred each of the holes using a countersink. The large holes give clearance for the head of a quarter inch socket head cap screw. I made a mark three and three quarter inch from the end. Once again, it's important these are clean, square, and clamped securely. And here's how it looked immediately after welding it. Now I'm making an end cap for the fence, and this is made from two by quarter flat bar, and it gets four holes drilled in it. I left it full length so that I could have something to hang on to while I drilled it. Then I cut it to length, and here's how that looks. 
Now it's welded and we can go ahead and tap the holes. These two pieces of flat bar hold the cam. They're spaced 1 and 5 8 inch apart. And I'll just weld here and here. No welds on the inside. With those welds cooling, we can get to work on the lead screw. These angle iron brackets hold the lead screw ends. They get a large hole drilled for a bearing. Using an angular contact flange bearing, which is perfect since it gives me side to side accuracy and it doesn't need a press fit because it has this flange. You could use a hole saw to cut this hole, but I don't have one the right size. So rather than buy one, I'll just use my metal lathe and bore it to the right size. Now the threaded rod assembly can be put together and these angle iron brackets can be bolted to the front square tube. And just to clarify, I ended up putting the bearings this way. Here I'm re-sawing some UHMW that I had to a 16th inch thick. I cut these to an inch and a half long and then I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy. and I epoxied these down to the adjustment flat bars. They don't need to be clamped real tight. Now using the adjustment screws, adjust the fence height to an eighth inch off the table or two and an eighth to the top. Now we can start working on the half nut assembly. It's made with an inch and a half by eight flat bar spring with two nuts welded on and it bolts to the end cap of the fence. The holes are drilled oversize, so it has some play. Found about the middle and tighten the bolts. Now get the fence out of the way and thread two nuts on the rod. Adjust them to about an inch and a half outside to outside and put the fence back on and clamp the nuts to the spring. Now you can take the bolts out and carefully lift the fence off, making sure you don't move the spring like I did. Then you can tack those in place and recheck, make sure everything's still right, and weld them solid. Then you can cut them in half. Now I'll start making the ball bearing cam. I'm using a metric bearing since I have it and I turned a shaft to 20 millimeters on my lathe but you can just use a 3 quarter inch bearing and shaft. The shaft gets a 5 16 hole drilled an eighth inch off center. Now determine the position for the cam and drill that hole. I just use a hand drill to drill it. Then I use the cam itself as a drill guide to drill the opposite side. I'm using a 7 16 bolt for the handle and I cut the threads off and then turned the head into a knob. And here's how that looked after welding. If the cam is too loose, tighten the screws on the front of the T-square. If it's too tight, you can do this. Now we need something to stop it from just going over center, how it is now. So I welded a little piece of rod in place, and that worked nicely. Now I'm making a wood support to go behind the lead screw. This part is one and three quarter inch by one inch, and the rod sits in the dado that I'm cutting. I want to set the final height of my dado blade, but I can't get my gauge in. But this is the advantage of this fence system, because I can just move it. And when I bring it back, 
I know that it's in exactly the same place. This dado is cut to 3 8 inch deep, which should leave 5 8 inch below the dado. So I can just use my handy depth gauge to measure that. And perfect. Now I can drill and countersink for quarter inch flathead bolts. And then I round it over the edges to make it look a bit better. Now you'll have to take the lead screw out of one of its end brackets and bolt the wood support in place. And now you can put the end back in. Next I'll make a hand wheel to make fine adjustments by turning the rod. You can use a bandsaw to make this if you don't have a CNC. Now that gets a washer, a spring, and a steel ball go in the hole in the frame the hand wheel that I just made, and a nut. And there's how the detent works. To attach the aluminum extrusions to the fence, I used socketed cap screws and T-track nuts. You can get these nuts from 8020. One extrusion gets quarter inch access holes drilled for an Ellen wrench. Just slide it on from the end, and I shimmed up the opposite end of the square tube by an eighth inch. Then I'm using these cardboard shims to hold the extrusion just off the table. Then just reach through the access holes and tighten the socket head cap screws. Some of these were a lot harder than I expected to get the wrench in, but it worked. The other side is done exactly the same way, except this time you have to reach through access holes in the extrusion, which makes it even harder to get the wrench on the bolts. Then I epoxied a piece of UHMW near the end of the fence to support that end so the aluminum doesn't drag. To calibrate the fence, just randomly lock it down and make a cut measure the piece, turn the rod a bit, and make another cut. And repeat this process until the part is the right width. With the fence still locked down, loosen the nut, turn the knob to the detent, and tighten the nut. Then retest to make sure it's still right. Now I need some sort of scale to let me know where the fence is. I'll start by making the pointer with this piece of metal. Put a bolt through, thread on a nut, tighten that up, then put another nut, a washer, and a T-track nut. Then I just inserted this into the T-track in the bottom of the fence face and tightened the nut. I drew the scale on myself, but if you're thinking about doing this, consider what your time is worth. You can go buy an adhesive back tape measure for about $5. And that's it. It's done. Thank you for watching.